For Sheriff Joe Arpaio, making waves just one day after announcing his Senate run in Arizona, the Republican candidate revealing that he still believes President Obama's birth certificate is fake. No, I started this because of fake document, a government document. I didn't care where the president came from. I didn't care at all. And we have the evidence. Nobody will talk about it. You believe phony that President Obama's birth certificate is a phony? No doubt about it. All right, let's bring in one of Joe Arpaio's Republican challengers in Arizona, Kelly Ward. Good morning, Dr. Ward. Good morning, Allison. Are you surprised that Joe Arpaio is still talking about Barack Obama's birth certificate? You know, it, it uh, is a controversy that doesn't need to be discussed. You know, I, I'm not going to really go down a rabbit hole with you, but... But do you believe uh, that, I believe that, that Barack that, Obama's birth certificate is real? Let's just dispense with it right there. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I believe that, that Barack Obama was born here, that he was our legitimate president, but I also think he, uh, and I know, he legitimately rammed the failed Obamacare health care policy down our throats, and now Republicans have to fix it. Okay, so what do you, just one more thing on Joe Arpaio, because he's such a colorful character and has been around for so long, even in the national dialogue, what do you think his chances are of winning? You know, I say welcome to the fray, Joe. Uh, you know, I, I, there's plenty of room in this race for Joe Arpaio. Um, you know, the polling, recent polling shows that 60 percent of the uh, Arizona electorate wants a conservative. There's a ceiling for other less conservative candidates, and it's around the same that the ceiling was for Jeff Flake, about 31, 32, 33 percent. So he stands a chance. So Joe Arpaio stands a chance. You know, Joe, Joe's a patriot. He is, has been a leader on fighting illegal immigration here in our state. We're a border state. Uh, of course, for me, I've been focusing on a lot of other issues. I've been yeah. focusing on immigration, of course, and building a wall and, uh, you know, fixing the tax code, repealing Obamacare, building our economy so that American citizens have more money in their pockets. Yeah. Those are the things that America cares about. And, and I do want to get the things I'm focusing on. I know. And I do want to get to your agenda. But when you say that Joe Arpaio has been a leader on immigration. I mean, he's been convicted of racially profiling Latinos. How is that being a leader on immigration? You know, he has fought for the rule of law here in Arizona, and that's what people and are looking it. for. That's why this DACA, that's why the DACA conversation that they're having at the White House is so important. But remember, we have to build the wall first. We have to enforce our borders so that we can uh, keep our, our citizens and our, our, our country safe. Yeah, I do want to talk to you about the wall, but Joe Arpaio was convicted. You say that he's fought for the rule of law. He broke the law. You know, he was pardoned by the president. And do you, um, were you, know, you comfortable he has been with a leader. his racial profiling? You know, people here in Arizona want the border secure. And that's why Sheriff Joe was so popular when he was in office. But it is not the be all end all issue that America is facing. Of course, I think it is the number one issue. But there are so many things that are still on the table. We are on, in the process of growing our economy. Mm -hmm. Look at the Dow. It's at record highs. And I think that the, the next couple of paychecks that people get, they're going to start to realize what the tax cuts mean to them personally, because more of their own money is going to remain in their pockets. Yesterday, you tweeted, the wall must be built. But it sounds like President Trump mm -hmm. is, I don't know if he's having second thoughts, but he's certainly redefining what that wall is. Do you understand what the wall would look like? Well, I know what I mean whenever I talk about the wall. What we definitely that? need a physical, a physical barrier that not only sends a, a message that there's a right and wrong way to come into this country, but it also slows down the progress of things that are coming into the country illegally. Things like human trafficking, uh, gun running, drug trafficking, contributing to the opioid crisis here in our country. Those things will be slowed down by a physical barrier. Okay, so but you want a not physical barrier, so a fence we, or a concrete yeah, wall? We, we, uh, yes, I, I'm, I'm getting ready to explain that, Allison. Definitely, we need to have a, a wall in some places. I can't wait to see the prototypes that are out. There will be fences in other areas. And, of course, we're going to utilize technology to the fullest. We're going to empower the Border Patrol so that they have the money and manpower to do what they were hired to do, which is keep people from coming into the country illegally in the first place. And the fourth piece of the puzzle is to make sure that we have accountability measures in place. E-verify across the board, across the 
country so that employers don't hire people, people illegally. And we have to have consequences for the people who have chosen to come to our country the wrong way, either to sneak across our border to, or to overstay their, their visas. And I, uh, those I, things have to have consequences rather than rewards. Understood. I want to ask you about what you're calling for, which is the physical wall. Analysts say that building that wall, the money that it would take, President Trump is asking for $18 billion. Sorry, 18, uh, give me a minute, billion. That would cut into all of the other things you're talking about, the surveillance, the radar technology, the patrol boats, and the border patrol agents. All of those would be, money would be siphoned off from to build the physical wall. Actually, that's incorrect. The cost of illegal immigration is much more than $18 billion. So I think no, I'm that talking we about the need to sorry, the get... cost of building the wall, just building the physical yes. wall. He's asked for $18 yes. billion, and that money would come right. out the, of the, the pool of $33 billion that pays for all of those other things. The money that's saved that, that will not be spent on illegal immigration will more than compensate for the cost of the physical wall. We have to honor the campaign promises that we've made, that I've made, that President Trump's made, that, that most Republicans that care about border security have made. Um, you know, people like Jeff Flake have always put amnesty, DACA, and open borders ahead of American citizens. We, we, can't, um, we can, can't continue down that path. I'll tell you that Ed Rollins, my campaign chair, who worked with Ronald Reagan, yep. said that his biggest regret was counting on Congress to enforce our immigration laws uh, whenever he was in office. We, we can't repeat the, re the, the mistakes of the past. Yep. We can't fall for the bait and switch that we're often offered, which is, we'll build the wall later as long as we get our liberal policies in place. Yep. That's got to stop, and I hope it stops with Donald Trump. Last question, do you expect an endorsement from President Trump? You know, I've gotten so many amazing endorsements. I'm so proud to have Senator Rand Paul on my team. Uh, I've also had endorsements from people like Sean Hannity and Laura Ingram and, and Mark Levin, and conservative stalwarts. And, I, I, you know, Steve Bannon, uh, you know, I don't know that I actually really got a, a full endorsement from Steve. Oh, I think you but, were his uh, candidate. You know, I, you know, uh, no, actually, I think that my message resonated with the things that Donald Trump said on the campaign trail. Oh, uh, the America First agenda that actually began way back in 2010. I hear you. With the, with the Tea Party but, movement. But Dr. Ward, and I'm only so, I'm only looking uh, at your press release. Hold on one second. I'm only looking yes. at your press release where you sure. say Ward has received national endorsements from Rand Paul, Laura Ingram, Sean Hannity, Mark Levin, Dick Morris and Steve Bannon. So that's where I'm yes. getting my information. Yes. I, and and I, yes, he, he uh, you know, but he was never part of my campaign. He was never an advisor. He was, he, I mean, he's not somebody that, uh, that I reach out and talk to in any way, shape, or form. So it's, it's funny that you and, and especially the establishment would love to tie me to Steve Bannon. But well, what really I mean, your press release ties you to Steve Bannon, but why are you distancing yourself now from Steve Bannon? I, I am distancing myself from Steve Bannon. He's made some significant mistakes, significant uh, gaffes that are unacceptable to me. I support the president. I support the president's family. And I support the, uh, the will of the American people and the people of Arizona who want the America first policies to be put in place. That's what I'm running on. Uh, and, and that's why the people of Arizona are so excited to have a candidate like me. Mm -hmm. My campaign is strong. My team is amazing. Yep. My grassroots support across the country or across the state of Arizona is uh, second to none. Okay. And that's why